Hi everyone. Um, so in this video, I'm going to talk a bit about Agisoft Metashape uh, 2.2 version. In the previous videos that we've made um, for this course in the past, we've been working with um, Agisoft Professional 1.8.4. Um, and there are a few changes to the interface and the workflow. Um, Agisoft Metashape has been optimized for um, LiDAR use. Um, so if you're doing aerial projects, um, this is now a really great tool. Um, I actually have, I'm still using pix 14 Mapper for that purpose and haven't moved to Metashape for that. Um, so I can't speak too much about it, but um, from forums I've seen online, uh, people seem to be quite happy with it. However, there have been some adjustments to our purposes. Um, so in the workflow, things have kind of moved around a little bit um, and that's why we are remaking this video. Now, so I'm not gonna go through the whole interface again because they are like quite small changes. So it's still worth um, going back to our previous um, video, which we will link below um, showing uh, yeah, interface 1.8.4. Um, but it's just some things that I want to highlight. Um, the main change um, is in the workflow tab. It used to be that everything was lined up like step-by-step step, and it was very intuitive for going through the workflow. Now, you're still going to add aligned photos um, into your chunks and you're still going to build your dense cloud, you're still going to build your mesh and your texture. Um, however, we want to find <laughs> build point cloud here. This will be the um, dense point cloud that you want to make after the alignment stage, which builds the tie point cloud. It is possible to go from align photos, which creates your, your tie point cloud directly to your mesh. Um, however, we won't be doing that um, in this course because when you go directly from your tie point cloud to your mesh, if you do any cleaning up of the point cloud before the mesh stage, then um, you're, you aren't able to really tell the software to take all of that work you just did into consideration when it's building the mesh. So it takes everything from the input photos, all the information. Um, so any like points that you've removed from space, it's still going to include that into the mesh. And I find editing a mesh much more difficult than editing a dense point cloud. So that's the reason that we are still gonna do the um, build point cloud stage. Um, and there's a couple of things that I will, um, yeah, a couple options that you have to check um, in the parameters when you're going through it. So um, we're gonna go through the workflow. I'm gonna go through it a little bit quicker than in the previous video, um, just because everything else is kind of similar. Um, so again, go back to the previous video if you wanna know more information about how things are working. Um, okay, so let's begin. So here we are in, we have a blank space. Um, I've already imported the photos. Um, we're gonna be building a Neolithic uh, flint axe that you just saw previously. So I have all the images um, down here and I imported them by going to add photos. Also drag and drop them uh, into the chunk or into your workspace here. So once you have them all here, you can see all of the metadata, um, the camera that I used and all the camera settings. But I also want to check the quality of the images. Um, just to make sure there's nothing yeah, too blurry that's going to impact the, the overall quality of the model. So to do that, I can right click on quality and go to estimate image quality and apply to all images and click okay. And then that will process for a couple of minutes. Okay, that only took a few seconds. So now we can um, sort them from high to low. Um, this is kind of on the higher end of the low quality, um, but yeah, you can see it's because um, some of these areas are a little bit out of focus. Um, so it's worth going through some of these bigger numbers and um, maybe considering deleting these if you have um, enough photographs to overlap other areas anyway. Um, okay, so we can go back to model and start with the workflow. So I'm going to align photographs 
And here you'll be met with certain parameters. Um, it's best to start with a low accuracy because that is the quickest uh, processing time. Um, and that will give you a really quick view of how much overlapping points you have to build up the model. Um, and if you can see areas where, um, yeah, there's a lot of gaps, then it's worth going back and taking more photographs as long as you haven't moved your object. Um, if you have a high functioning computer um, with a good memory and graphics card, then you can go high and it shouldn't take too long to process. Um, everything else you can just leave on the default settings. And then we click OK and wait for it to process. And I might just skip ahead in the video a little bit. OK, so we're back and we have our, um, a, our, our type one cloud. So I, <laughs> gen I put all of the photographs that I had into one chunk. And what I should have done is separated the two chunks um, based on photos that show the top side of the axe and another chunk for the bottom side of the axe. And then we will um, align those two chunks together. And in um, the next video, I will show you how to do that. However, this possibly is a, another um, edition of this new ver uh, update that I haven't actually seen yet, um, but it just managed to align the two uh, sides together already. So great. Um, however, I'm wondering how it's going to work with this uh, all these areas here, because you can see um, these are the platforms that the object was resting on. Um, so yeah, that will involve quite a bit of cleaning. Um, so from here, we're going to build the um, dense cloud. And so as I mentioned, normally, or in the past, um, that was located right here. Um, but now it's down here at build point cloud. So we will click that. And um, these are the parameters that you can choose. This is another um, new feature in the new update. You can save the project um, uh, during the processing, which is great because if the program crashes, um, if it was too heavy for your computer and it crashes, then that work is lost. But now, um, it should save that work and then you can go back to it um, when you reopen. Uh, it hasn't happened to me yet, so I can't confirm whether <laughs> this is uh, going to be the case, but um, would be worth checking that just in case. Um, so I want the quality again to be high. I want the depth filtering to be mild um, because I, I want more control about um, the points that it's going to filter out. Um, so all of the, the areas um, I would walk on, but sometimes if you do aggressive, then it's going to delete a lot of the points on the object that you still want. So I do mild um, and click calculate point colors and point confidence. Um, and this will help us with um, editing of our point cloud. And click OK. OK, so I skipped ahead in the video. Uh, that took about four minutes to process. Um, so it's Finish. So now we can turn on the dense cloud view, um, which you can find uh, up here in the toolbar. So you click that. And this is our dense cloud. Um, and you can zoom in and see all of the points that this is made up of. Um, and it's also um, due to the um, the, uh, depth, or the filtering, um, it's removed a lot of this uh, redundant points on the outside. So it's going to make it a lot easier to clean up now. Um, but I want to show you some ways of cleaning. Um, first, you can do this manually. Um, you can go to the, your selection tool here um, with um, different forms. I like to use the free form. And you can um, just move around the page this way and then click X for delete. And that will delete those points. Another way is to filter by um, confidence or color. Um, which is why we checked those boxes um, during processing. So to filter by confidence, we can go back here and click point cloud confidence. And now we can see um, the confidence level of the, um, the dense cloud. So in this legend here, one is the least confident. Um, and this makes sense because most of the surrounding uh, points are one. Um, also on the model itself, you can see some red 
or it's, um, and if you zoom closer, you can see that it's because there are some missing areas here um, and all along the edge too. And yeah, this is because when you have a really sharp edge of an object and you're doing photogrammetry, it's, it can be difficult to capture those areas. Um, so that's why there are some missing areas and why the confidence is low. Luckily, these are quite small areas, so we will be able to autofill that later. Um, so if we want to remove these points based on the confidence, we can go to Tools and Point Cloud. And down here, we can filter by confidence. So we have a default um, range from 0 to 125, one, uh, 255. Um, so if we change the max to one and click apply, then it's just going to show um, all these low confidence areas on the model. So if we click OK, and we can then select all of it and delete it. Um, so we've removed those low confidence areas. And to get your model back, go back to Tools, Point Cloud, Filter by Confidence, and put back the default range, which was a max of 255, and apply. And so now we have, um, yeah, some less um, points visible. Um, so you could continue doing it this way. Um, you could, yeah, remove these areas, um, which are in yellow. Uh, you could go up to a maximum of five. However, I would avoid doing it because um, we do have more of these um, confidence levels on the model, and we don't want to delete too much of that because then you'll end up with a lot of holes in the model, which um, otherwise would, wouldn't be there. So we won't do that. Okay, so another thing to do um, is to filter by color. Um, the other box that we checked during processing. So to do that, we could go back to um, our um, toolbar here and click colors. Now you can see um, the uh, kind of a preview of what the texture will look like for the model in the end. Um, and now I can go into tools, point cloud, and fill, uh, select points by color. And that you will be greeted with this menu. Um, so it gives you some options here. You can also go select color, um, and you could filter by white. Um, and if I press OK, then it will, um, like in the confidence one, highlight to all of the areas that are in white. However, I'm not going to do this because this model and these the the platform that I'm standing on are very similar colors. So if I start choosing colors on the uh, platform, then it will also pick up the colors in the model and again, delete points that I don't want deleted. So I'm not gonna do this, um, but just to let you know that the option is there. So I will just go the route of manually cleaning these outer bars and I'll just do this very quickly. Okay, so now we have a clean dense cloud to work with. So the next step is to build our mesh. Um, so we go back to workflow and click build model. Now here's where we want to be careful based on this these new updates. Um, we have options for source data here. We have tie points, depth maps, or point cloud. So if you are if you have um, edited your model as we just did, you're going to want to click um, uh, point cloud. Um, so when it's building the mesh, it's going to use this depth, dense cloud, um, or known as point cloud, um, yeah, to generate the 3D model. Um, and this is kind of the, the default of the previous version too, but although it was called dense cloud then, now it's point cloud. Um, if we chose to use depth maps, this um, is the feature that takes all of the information from your input photos to build the 3D model. Um, it does create a high quality model. However, it's going to incorporate all of these extra points that we had just deleted into the model. Um, so we're not going to do that. And the other option is tie points. And this is um, more of a fast generation um, option. Um, it creates quite a poor quality model, but um, yes, it is quite fast. So, um, <clears throat> so we choose point cloud. 
Um, we do arbitrary 3D. Um, height uh, field is more for a, a aerial um, models that you can incorporate to GIS. Um, so 3D, and we can choose our face count here. Um, so I tend to do a high quality model, um, a high face count for, my, for the first uh, processing. Um, that way you have, yeah, a high resolution model. And then you can go back later and decimate your model. Um, if you're going to be sharing it online, sending it to people, um, you can create a duplicate of your high resolution model uh, decimated, and then you have a low quality um, option as well, um, as opposed to directly going low quality now, and then I only have one version of the model. Um, so hi. And um, yeah, these are not so relevant for us. Um, again, you can save after the step. And we click OK. Um, and then you're going to be met with this um, warning. And it's the program really wants you to use the depth map. Um, it yeah, requires less processing power for your computer. Um, however, as I mentioned, it's going to incorporate a lot of data that you don't want um, included in the mesh. So we can just ignore it and click yes. And then I will skip ahead as well. Okay, so it's finished processing and now we can turn on our mesh view. Um, at the, on the toolbar up here. So this is our 3D mesh. And you can um, also view it as the shaded model. Um, again, a preview of the texture. And you can also see the wireframe of um, all the polygons that make up this 3D model. And so our final step in the workflow is to build the texture. Um, <clears throat> so we want to use all these default um, settings are fine. You can change the resolution of your model here. Um, 4K will be good enough for our purposes. You could do 2K if you don't want a big file size. Um, also 8K if you want a really high resolution. Um, and click. Um, yeah, we want to use the images as our source data, not the 3D model, because um, it's going to use the information from this, which is not as high quality as the texture information from our original source data. So images and okay. Okay, so once it's done processing, again, you can go to your model and now textured uh, option has appeared. So we click that and now we have our uh, photorealistic 3D model. And that is the basic workflow. Um, so the final step would be to export your model. Um, you go here, click uh, where you want to save it, and then you can also choose all these different file types. Um, we are, uh, for this course, advising to do OBJ, because um, that will create a material file and a texture file, along with the 3D model file. Uh, so yeah, there you go. So this was the workflow for Azure Soft Professional 2.2. Um, you are welcome to watch the video on manual and marker-based alignment um, for when you have two different sides of model. Um, as I mentioned, I was able to just import all of the photos into one chunk, and um, it was automatically able to align the two sides. Um, so you're also welcome to try that. Um, yeah, and good luck. Thanks.